Hey YouTube, uh, it's Wednesday, it's time for our live stream. I appreciate everybody for stopping in, uh, apologize for last week canceling, I was a little under the weather last week, uh, but we're all better this week, so I have a lot lined up, including two poll questions instead of just one, since we didn't live stream last week. Uh, I also have a, a new background to, to shout out, so Redneck Aquatics, George from Redneck Aquatics, I'll cover you next week, man. You're up next. I know you sent me your uh, shot of your tank like three weeks ago, so you're up next, dude. But um, we'll go over the background and all the plants that are in it, to, uh, the, the background behind me now. Um, we'll also cover the two uh, topics. But the main topic is do you use CO2 in your planet aquarium? And if not, or if so, why or why not? So. Um, We'll see, we'll see what everyone has to say. Uh, we'll look in the chat real quick. Uh, we see a hello, I use liquid CO2. Petsotics, how you doing, man? Triple 10 tanks, thanks for joining. Angelo, how's it going, man? Actually, you inspired this topic, Angelo, so this conversation we just had last week, so, um, so we'll see what everyone says, what everyone has to say about it. Um, Keep in mind, whatever conversation we have, there's, it's okay to disagree, but I don't think anybody's wrong. Everyone has their preferences, right? HC Aquatics, how's it going, man? Keith, what's up? I appreciate you joining. Um, so I also want to mention real quick, just a real quick uh, cameo for JH Aquatics. He had a really cool live stream on Sunday talking about some of the uh, illegal gold mining that is happening down in the Amazon. Um, resulting in some um, mercury leaching into the streams down there as well as the deforest deforestation. So um, I left a link down in the, the description of this video um, to Project Amazonia where you can learn more about it and you can donate as well as a link to JH's, uh, JH Aquatics channel so you can go check out um, that live stream I'm talking about. Very informational, did a great job of presenting the information, a lot of great maps and pictures and um, data. So. Go check that out. It's definitely a good cause. Um, and if you can or are willing, go ahead and donate. Um, but I just want to help spread awareness and help do my part as far as that goes. Um, so I thought it was a great job by JH. HC, I, you're all for CO2, man. I see that. You use it in three-year tanks. So I don't have any, in, any CO2 in any of my tanks currently. Um, but I've used it with extreme success. And the reason why I chose this one, this one's actually my brother's tank. And this is exactly what you can achieve with CO2 injection. I think he did a great job on this tank. So hopefully he joins tonight and he can kind of give some input as well. Um, we'll get into that in here in a little bit later. Mindy Gill, hello. Thanks for joining. So let's get into the first, uh, the first topic from last week real quick. Um, let me see if I can find it here. Too many windows open. Um, I asked the poll, we had 50 responses for how far are you willing to drive for an awesome fish store? So 8% said 30 minutes or less. So you're only willing to go in your town or maybe the next, maybe the next town over. 30 to 60 minutes got 50% of the vote. So it's definitely the most common. One to two hours got 28%, which is the group that I fall into, one to two hours, because my favorite fish, fish, fish store is about an hour and 45 to two hours away. 
Um, and then two plus hours got 14%. So um, I the reason why I asked this was I actually drove about 30, 35 minutes to a pet store I'd never been to. Um, and I didn't actually pick anything up. Um, and the funny thing is, it, the further I drive, the more likely I am to buy something, right? So if I go all the way down to Columbus, I'm much more likely to buy something from that fish store, especially since it's such an awesome store. Everything's super healthy, always an awesome uh, selection. But with this poll question, um, the Planet Tank actually responded with two plus hours. It doesn't matter to me as long as I got, they have lots of plants and show tanks. So it's definitely a lot of fun just to wander and explore and see some new stuff and um, some awesome things. Purple Gang said one to two hours. Um, depends on what you had to transport uh, trans transport them in, like a um, bubbler, etc. So that's definitely a good point. Um, how far can you drive and still keep your plant, uh, your fish uh, alive? So um, I would say nowadays, as long as you have enough oxygen and keep them in the right temperature, I think they'll be fine. I mean, I order a lot of my fish online and they come in just fine after being in a box for one and maybe even two days. So um, I, d I definitely agree with the one to two hours though. Um, and then Kitty uh, says 30 to 60 minutes. Um, I guess that an hour is too long. You might kill your fish. Yeah, the longer the longer the drive, the more likely you are to do that. So um, I just thought that was real interesting um, to see how far people are willing to drive to go to a fish store, an awesome fish store. I'm not just talking any fish store, but something that you think is your favorite or always has something cool or whatever. How far are you willing to drive? <clears throat> Keith? I just started playing with it in my 29. So you just started playing with CO2 in your 29. Um, how's that going, man? Having a good experience so far? Um, do you have a drop checker or how are you measuring how much CO2 you're pumping in there? <clears throat> Angelo's fish tanks. Then you need to head to Florida. Uh, AC Aqua says he's willing to drive 30 minutes at the most for a fish store. So, um, here in Ohio, that's basically in the town you're in or the next town over is basically as far as you're willing to, to drive. Um, Angelo drives 45 minutes to his uh, regular. Um, yeah, here, here where we live, we don't have a whole lot of choices unless you want to go to a big box store. So um, the awesome fish tank that I always refer to is almost two hours away down in Columbus, Ohio. So um, we uh we go down there occasionally and a lot of times we'll stop and get dinner or whatever but usually I don't come home empty-handed. Last time I think uh I went down there I got I came home with some slate at the very least. Um AC Aqua says, "Have you ever gassed your fish uh with CO2?" I cur I have not. Um but my method for adding CO2, I normally if I'm going to add CO2, um I add it to a brand new tank. So when you're setting it up and it's cycling and you're adding your plants, I pump up the CO2 and just crank it and then uh, drop it down from there. So um, I try to get it in the right range that's safe for fish before I add the fish. Now, if I end up adding CO2 to the 125, I'm going to have to be a little more careful and maybe do the opposite, start low and, and work my way up. Um, but that's how I handle it. So I never really gassed out my, my fish. Eric says, when did you start? YouTube just now notified me. I started probably right around 7, maybe like 7.01 or 7.02. Angel says, yeah, I don't like box stores. I don't either, but I still, sometimes if we're um, in a town about 30 minutes away who has two box, big box stores, we'll stop in just to look. Um, we stopped in just to look um, at at a box store last weekend just, just for the heck of it, just to see what they had. Hello, I used it in my 70 gallon discus planted tank. I started it with 20 watts, low tech, and to a high tech 150 watts. So you started low and upgraded. That's definitely a good way to go. Um, uh, with my 125, I, I, I'm, I kept going back and forth. And right now, I, ha I don't have anything that re currently requires CO2 to grow well. It'll just obviously look awesome and do great if it does have CO2. Um, and here in a little bit, we'll get into positives and negatives of, of CO2. Um, I don't, I, I like both. I, I like the high tech tank. I have a great appreciation of a high tech tank, but I also like, uh, lower maintenance, uh, medium to low tech tank. So 
We'll see what I do with the 125. It's the drop checker. So far, so so far, so good. I haven't noticed. I've noticed a pretty good difference in growth. Well, that's good. Um, that's definitely the good thing. You'll see a lot of good fresh growth. Um, plants will grow a lot faster and healthier. Fish Tropic, what's up, man? Thanks for stopping in. Hey, everyone. No CO2 in my planted African cyclo tank. What do you keep in your African cyclo tank? Um, you keep Java fern, Anubias, some of the more bulletproof, maybe a, a heavy root setter like a like a uh, Amazon sword or something. Because um, I know African cichlids can be diggers and can be rough on plants. So, uh, what do you keep with those African cichlids? But think of the possibilities, says Angelo. You're right. Um, my ceiling will be much higher with CO2. Um, even if I don't get anything that requires it, I might end up going to it eventually. Um, we'll see. <clears throat> so real quick. So now that Eric's uh, on the live stream, let's go ahead and um, go over the background, the featured background tank for today. Get my fat head out of the way here if I can. There we go. So Eric, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is a rimless 20 gallon. Um, he's got pressurized CO2, which is kind of why I chose it for the background today. Um, I think he did a great job with the Aquascape, a very sweet uh, Aquascape. Um, lots of different plant species, lots of different crypts, um, some floaters. Um, he's got some Chili raspberries in there, sparkling gourami, um, some almond leaves down at the bottom of the aquascape, some pygmy quarries. He's working on the list right now. He's going to get me. So um, the driftwood here, that little arch in the middle, I think that looks really cool. Uh, he's got different kinds of mosses, uh, some S. repens, which S. repens is one of my favorite plants, period. Um, even when it's not carbonated, if, I, I might use it as an accent plant around my hardscape so um we'll see how that goes uh but these crypts right here look really sweet um he's really got the, the a good balance dialed in not much algae in there at all so everything's looking really good so um i really thought this was a good example of a co2 tank since i don't currently run co2 in any of my tanks right now uh so what do you guys what do you guys think um i just saw that ram's horn snail too um, really like him. He's grown a lot uh, since he just got the just since he got the thing. Um, so uh, we'll come back to this when Eric gets a good plant list. But he's got several species in here, um, and I really like the balance that he found for this tank. Um, I don't know if everyone else agrees, but uh, he uh, I, I find fast growing floaters is a cheat code. So um, if you happen to overdose or something um, with your fertilizers. Um, those uh, fast growing floaters will help soak up those excess nutrients before the before the algae can take hold. So we'll get back into the chat here. Uh, I have nine kinds of Anubias, three kinds of Java fern, and some crypts. So really good uh, choices there for for African cichlids, uh, all bulletproof um, bulletproof species. Yeah, I'll get my fat head up here in the front again. There we go. But um yeah. So a lot of people are afraid to start uh, afraid to try plants with African cichlids and um three species I would definitely recommend are Java fern, Anubias, and something like a uh like an Amazon sword that's hard to dig up because it gets sets its roots so well. Eric says check your phone, so I probably got a list here. Stunning tank. Yeah, it's a really good looking tank. Um I uh, really I really think you did a really good job. So let me see if I can get my phone here. We'll go over some of the lists of Eric says, "Yes, floaters are definitely key to no algae for sure. Definitely cheating." So let's get in here to my text. All right, let's get my fat head out of the way again. So he's got Cryptocorin uh, Lutea, Lutea Hobbit, 
Secret Parva, Endulata, Spiralis Tiger. Uh, carpets are Dwarf Hairgrass, Monte Carlo, and S. Reppin. So I really like Monte Carlo as well. I had that growing in my, uh, currently growing a carpet in my bonsai, five gallon bonsai tank without CO2. So that's definitely one of the carpet, one of the plants you can get started with a dry start and grow a nice carpet without CO2 injection. For uh, moss, he runs Ricardia and Visitance Fox. Um, stem plants, Hydrocoddle, um, Pearlweed. And an AR, uh, Autism Theory Renecki. He's got some rhizome plants in there as well. Java Fernero, Anubius Petite. Uh, he's got some Busa Philander in there. Um, a couple different types. I'm not going to try to pronounce those right now, but that's what he's got in there as far as plants. So quite a few different plant species. I'd say, what, Eric, probably 15 or 20 different species in there, along with a sweet uh, slate scape there. So um, really nicely done. All right, let's check out this chat again. Get back, caught back up here. <clears throat> AC Alqua says, very nice tank. So, yeah, he did a really good job. Um, CO2 in a tank is like turbocharge for your car. <laughs> Best scene, CO2 ejection is your plants purling. I agree with the purling. I got a couple pictures a few months back um, when I had my 37-gallon uh, high-tech tank set up. Uh, of a purling uh, plant and it's so satisfying to to get that to get that good balance of no algae and your plants are growing at such a rate that they're uh, purling so um, definitely a good feeling I agree with the supercharged car but you don't always need a supercharged car though right um, Mindy says uh, <laughs> nice work Eric HC Aqua What are those red needle -like leaf plant? Eric, is that the red tiger? Um, hold on just a second. Is that the Spiralis tiger, Eric? The red leaf that you see right behind my head here? That's pretty sweet looking. Yeah, Crip Spiralis tiger. Hope oh, didn't get that far. You answered your question. Thanks, Eric. Adds a nice touch. I think that's a, adds a nice different uh, uh, texture and color. Nice splash of color there. All right, so now we'll get into the the uh, the poll question for do you run CO2? So um, the question was, do you prefer run CO2 in your tank? Let me know the reason with a comment below. So. We had a good turnout here, 43 votes. 35% um, of those were yes for CO2. 65% were no, I do not like to use CO2. So it was kind of weird because when, it, when I first posted this, the first few hours, it was like overwhelmingly no. I was like very surprised by that. Um, but then it even back itself back out over the next few days. Um, Chris Herrera says, no, I don't like to use CO2 only because it seems like a hassle or seems difficult. Uh, it could be easy, I guess. He just doesn't know. Um, so someone who maybe doesn't have much experience and maybe um, would like to try it um, someday. Khan Khan says, I ran it years ago uh, before YouTube. I was always worried about it. So it definitely adds a different element, right? So instead of worrying, just worrying about the classic ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, um, pH levels and things like that, you also have to worry about your CO2 injection levels then. Uh, so I, it does add an extra element if you uh, maybe forget it could add uh, extra complication too if you forget to, to dose it's more important to dose regularly or you could end up with a uh, with a nutrient deficiency because if you have high light and highly available co2 the limiting factor could be the nutrients that your plants need to grow so you could encourage nutrient deficiency in your plants um, if you don't keep up with your dosing schedule uh, there's a number of different things that it just adds an extra element AC Aqua said in this comment, said, yeah, CO2, plants look better with CO2. They definitely do look better and definitely grow better with CO2 with a properly dosed tank. ACH Aquatics, um, they said they don't like to use CO2. I shouldn't really say I don't like it. I have never used CO2, but thought about using it. But it would be a regulator. 
used on several tanks without having multiple bottles. So he, he's looking at uh, something like uh, DIY Aqua Pros used to have. He had one tank that ran to multiple tanks. That's a pretty one CO2 tank that ran to multiple aquariums. Um, that'd be a pretty sweet setup. Um, Colin said, yes, CO2. Plant grows so much better. Jose said, no, he doesn't like to use CO2. It's not that he doesn't like it. Well, not that he doesn't like it. Uh, he just doesn't have it. Um, could be an option. He'd like to, but he doesn't want to get involved with cost-wise. So that's another good point. It's uh, costly to get into, right? Because you got to buy the diffuser. You got to buy the the regulator and solenoid. Because um, you, you definitely want to have that on a uh, timer, right? Uh, in, in conjunction with your lights. So you don't knock your water parameters out of whack uh, when the light goes off. Um, so there's a lot more to think about, especially if you're just new to getting in the planted tanks. Um, and then the next uh, comment said, no, they don't. They prefer not to use CO2. They're newish to the hobby. So, um, and that's the thing you'll probably see with a lot of newer people, just a little intimidated, not quite ready experience wise to get into CO2 injection. So um, is that, it, it, whatever you, whatever your preference is, why do you prefer it? So you prefer it because it, it helps your plants outcompete algae for available nutrients, right? It helps your plants go fast. Um, it can help them get to the optimal color. So if you have a red plant, it can help them get to that awesome red or purple tint. Um, but if you don't like it, it could be because it's expensive to get into it. Um, it adds an extra element um, or water parameter that you have to worry about as far as suffocating your fish or um, causing pH swings um, and things of that nature. Or if you just oftentimes forget to get the, um, to keep up on your, uh, your, uh, uh, your fertilizing schedule. So trying to spit it out. Uh, so it, it just it definitely adds a little bit of complication. I feel it also adds a little bit of work because with my high tech tank, I definitely had to trim some plants. And so when you have a carpet in there and you're trying to trim some plants, you have to do it more often, right? So Technically, although you're cleaning algae maybe a little less, you're trimming plants more. So I think it's a little bit more work as far as that goes. Um, for me, it's not entry cost as much so much because I already have the, the regulator and solenoid and the diffuser and, and the, the CO2 line, uh, tubing. Um, so all I need is a, a bigger uh, canister for my CO2 for the 125 if I'm going to run it on my CO, uh, 125. See if we can get caught up here in the chat again. <clears throat> uh, it says maybe maybe an Amazon sword would be a nice addition. Thanks for the tip. Um, yeah, I I definitely think that'd be good since they tend to be diggers and are it's a tough plant and big root system it can definitely prevent them from getting root uprooted. Indeed, wasted too much money trying to make the, the carpet on it, the top of the rocks. I just decided to fight with it because it was not going well for me. So more comments on the aquarium um, for the background. Awesome job, Eric. Um, I think the tank turned out great. Um, it's definitely in a good phase. You have a good balance of nutrients and CO2 and lighting. Um, also for the lighting, he has the same lighting I have for my 125. He has the... Uh, uh, prime HD uh, LED freshwater lighting so um, definitely gets you some good results very customizable as far as settings how strong you want it to be the spectrum you're going to use and, and things like that so um, all right so any exciting uh, Plans coming up over the holiday week as far as fish tank plans. I have an exciting trip that I can't reveal exactly what I'm doing, but I'm going to an awesome um, destination that I'm going to film for an upcoming video um, for a great cause. They do an awesome job and um, I do a great thing for our hobby. So I'm excited to take a little road trip, maybe an hour and a half away um, to do that one day um, next week. So um, I have that going on. So. Um, HC Aqua says, 
What do you use for furts, Eric? Yeah, Eric, what do you what do you dose in this tank? Is that a mono shrimp right over my shoulder there? Looks like a mono shrimp. Um so let's see. All right. So what do we think? So HC Aqua has three tanks with uh, CO2. Eric has a tank with CO2. Um, anybody else want to? Um, what do, What do you think? What do you? What are your pro, pros and cons as far as CO2 injection? Um, and what are your methods for implementing it? Do you start it from the from the very beginning after you flood a tank or fill a tank and plant the plants? Um, do you add it later on? And if so, how? Right? It, you probably can't just crank it up. Um, you have to be mindful of your fish or shrimp or any other inhabitants you have in the tank. So, how do you, how do you, in your mind, if you were to a beginner getting started, what would, you, what advice would you give them? Eric says he's dosing. I can't read that. Dosing Thrive right now. Thrive C right now. Plans. I'm still planning to set up my. Paladarium. Oh man, that's gonna look sweet. Oh, that reminds me, HC. I really want to try to get. I'd love to try to get some um, mud skippers someday. That tank that you and uh, you and Jimmy uh, Aquascape turned out awesome. Um, I think mud skippers are such a cool, cool little critter. Um, I like watching them jump and play in there, and they're such a unique looking animal. Um, would love to try to to try to keep those someday. Um, awesome, awesome work there with that aquascape as well with those mangroves and you said that that's brackish right hc i also i feel tempted for another saltwater tank probably not anytime soon but i would love to get started back into salt water um so we'll see what happens eric uses one pump a day Got it before the CO2. I might change it up soon. So you do an all-in-one fertilizer, Eric, right? You don't uh, individually dose. Hey, Raccoon. Glad to join your stream. I'm glad to have you. I appreciate you stopping in. So we're talking CO2 in tanks. We're also talking um, dosing. What we're dosing in the tank behind me. Uh, uh, he's done a great job. Um, if And also, if you... Want to comment? I don't know if you saw my uh, my uh, uh, poll from two weeks ago. What's the furthest you're willing to drive to a awesome fish store? And what's the likelihood you're going to come home empty-handed? HC says yes, it's brackish. So his, you need to go check out his channel. Um, he does a lot of awesome stuff. But here lately, I've been all about his mud skipper tank. That's brackish. Um, they just uh. They just rescaped his tank, so if you haven't seen it, make sure you go over and check him out. If you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe to HC Aqua. He does an awesome job. Eric says, yes, it's an all-in-one fertilizer. <clears throat> all right. I have a 40 breeder that's probably considered decently planted. Now, now pressurized CO2, pH, pH drop from 7.4 to about 6.1. You're he's dosing dry fertilizers using oh cool using some micros. Um, you if you if you'd like to share it, um, send me a send me a one minute clip of your favorite tank if that's one of your favorite tanks and show me how it looks. Show me an update and I'll, maybe I'll use it if you'd like. Use it as a background on my um, one of my live streams and give you a shout out. Um, of course, I give you some credit as the background and um, share with me what are, what's the lighting, um, what plants you got stock, have stocked in it, um, what fish do you have, uh, what do you feed your fish and things like that. Um, I'd love to share that. 
Um, and anybody can do that. It could be your favorite tank. It can be your favorite uh, fish. Send it to Raccoon Creek Aquatics at gmail.com. And I will um, I'll use that on one of my live streams. Right now, my next one will probably be uh, George from, from Redneck Aquatics. He sent me a video a few weeks ago. I need to get back to him and make sure I post his video as my background. So that will be next week's. Same light Jake has on his 125 AI Prime Freshwater. Absolutely, I'll do that. Be forewarned, I'm still battling algae. Yeah, it's new tank syndrome, right? Um, we'll get you'll get a good balance. I'm sure it still looks awesome. I'd love to just discuss, and um, a lot of people can learn off a uh, off of others. And it sounds like you got a good plan there as far as your tank setup. I'd love to see it. AC says, ah, oh, those are some awesome lights. Yeah, I love the, uh, the lights on my uh, my 125. Definitely, definitely happy that I got, went, went that route. You can customize the spectrum, the, the schedule, time schedule. You can customize sc storm frequency, um, all from an app on your cell phone. I've actually been thinking about putting in or looking up a overhead type of sump um, filter of some type. So um, does anybody have any good good plans or good ideas or good designs that work for them to have an overhead sump with some marginal plants and some lava rock in there? Um, if so, let me let me know. Um, shoot me some suggestions on my email um, and maybe I'll look at trying them. I'd love to see see what ideas everyone could come up with. I'm thinking right now maybe a plastic planter, drilling some holes um, and having a pump in the tank, hopefully hidden behind some plants or some driftwood or something. So um, we'll see what I decide there. Um, but what do you guys think about that? Do you guys have any designs that work for, or some any designs you've seen that I might want to try? Um, let me know. Crystal Shack Aquatics. Hey, finally got a minute. Um, funny enough, I was trying to get a shipment of plants. Uh, oh, sweet. So you're looking to get plants, Crystal Shack? Um, have you ever thought about doing CO2, um, uh, for a planted tank? Pacific Reef Imports. What do you think about Aquarium Co-op All-In for, I just started using it. Um, just got it in, just started using it. So I'll let you know here in a few weeks. Um, Literally, like, 24 hours ago, I started using it. So I'll let you know. Um, don't have much, much, much experience with it yet. I've heard a lot of great things, a lot of positive reviews. So um, definitely excited to try it out. Have you ever used it, Pacific Reef? All right. Crystal Shack Aquatics says, been looking at, at DIY CO2 for my plant tank only tanks, plant only tanks. Um, why only plant only? Uh, just experimenting before you put your fish in there. What kind of, what type of CO2? You're looking at using like yeast or something? Like uh, yeast in the two liter or, or 20 ounce uh, plastic bottles? Be interested to see a video on that. Pacific Reef says he ordered it yesterday, so we'll experiment together. Um, I've heard nothing but good things about it, so I'm sure it's going to be great. Um, can't wait to see see what I find from it. All right. So I always say if you're new to this live stream and you see a channel that you don't uh, that you don't recognize, go check them out. Go subscribe. Um, show some support. Uh, definitely. Um, a lot of good channels here. Uh, Crystal Shack, I really enjoyed her uh, her fish room tour from a few weeks ago. Um, go check her out. A lot of great channels, and we're all trying to meet goals. Um, so definitely recommend um, supporting each other.
<clears throat> All right. Hey, Crystal Shack, how far are you willing to drive for a for a fish store? Just out of curiosity. Also, does anybody else in this chat have experience with uh, Aquarium Co-op with their uh, all-in-one fertilizer, Easy Green? I'll be I'll be sure to. I'm sure it's going to be awesome experience, and I'll be sure to let everyone know how it goes. Um, super excited to give it a try. And also, if you you missed the beginning of this stream, I also have a link to the description of this of this live stream. If uh, you miss JH Aquatics or if you're not familiar with him, he has an awesome channel and he had a live stream that was very information informational about a uh, what's going on down in the Amazon as far as illegal gold mining that's causing um, mercury to be leached into the streams down there and causing a lot of damage to the environment um, and to some of the fish and the, the animals that inhabit the area as well as just a deforestation. So um, he had a great informational uh, stream. Did a great job presenting the information. I learned a lot, and I want to do my part to help raise awareness. So you can find a link to his channel down in the description, as well as a link to Project Amazonia, where you can learn more and also donate if you would like to donate to that. Do you have other ideas for plants from a cichlid tank? I have pretty low lighting because because of the Anubius. Um. So you have Anubius in there, you have your Crypt, you have Java Fern, and you're going to try Amazon Sword. You could probably try some kind of like Java Fern or uh, Java Moss. Uh, Java Moss is like impossible to kill, it seems like. Um, you could mount it to rock or wood and it'll sit there. And I think that that would do well in a cichlid tank. Um, does anybody else in the chat have any suggestions for um, for this question? Crystal Shack says, yeah, yeast. Um, just so you don't overdose the CO2 accidents, accidentally kill the fish. Haven't had any experience with CO2 injection. That's a good way to to experiment and get your feet wet with CO2. Never tried uh, DIY with like yeast and stuff like that. So definitely be interested to see some videos on that. Terry's Tropical Tanks. First, first time here I saw you were streaming from the Facebook on air page. Streaming from the Facebook on air page? Huh. Crystal Shack Aquatics. Um, all the way to Auckland, which is nine hours from here. You've driven nine hours. That's awesome. That's like a two day thing then, huh? Do you normally bring fish on that trip? Um, and if so, what do you how do you prepare for that? Do you bring a bucket with airstone? Um, just to make sure you you get things home. Okay. HC Aquatics says, ah, yes, I used uh, the Coop Furt. It's been working fine with me. Yeah, I've heard nothing but positive uh, positive reviews on this, so that's why I decided to try it. Um, just been using it like 24 hours, so definitely won't, won't see how it works for me until I give it a few weeks. Redneck Aquatics, what's going on? Um, yes, I actually exclusively use the Easy Green um, and the Easy Iron. And they make they make my tank look great. Uh, that's that's awesome. I can't wait to get some good uh, good results out of the, uh, the Easy Green. I haven't tried the Easy Iron. I haven't bought that yet. Um, by the way, Redneck, I do have your video. You'll be next week um, as far as uh, as far as video background and background shout out. So um, I'll get your video up. I know you sent your video clip like three weeks ago. So I'll get you up there, George. Terry's Tropical Tanks. I use Easy Green stem plants. The stem plants love it. Never, never saw my hygrophilia grow so fast. <coughs> Excuse me. There's a fish importer there, so I, I want to go there to two stores that they have up there. Java moss gets eaten. Oh well, okay. Then let me let me think about that. Um, let me think of another another example then. Uh, but definitely the Anubius, the Java Fern, 
and the Amazon sword are definitely two um, fail-proof plants with a with an African cichlid. Terry's Tropical Tank says there's a Facebook page that lists who is live streaming that day fish related. Oh, okay, I was on that. Okay, that's awesome. I know, I know the page you're talking about, Terry. Crystal Shack Aquatics. Take the van. Take the van and a huge poly box with basically pack them like, like they're shipping them and drive them home. So, <coughs> excuse me. So you take you just pack them up from the from the importer, take them home just like they're being sent in the mail. Redneck Aquatics says it's all good, brother. Terry's saying the aquarium live streams information. So I know I know the page you're talking, um, Terry. That's awesome that I made it on there. Um, I'm glad I'm glad you could join us. So, <clears throat> somebody else have any good suggestions as far as plants you can keep with a with an African cichlid tank? I'm trying to think of some other bulletproof plants that wouldn't get dug up or just beaten up or eaten by African cichlids. I kept an Afri I kept a Java fern for a few years with an Oscar really successfully. He didn't bother it or anything. Um, and then one one day he just decided he didn't want it anymore and just uprooted it and destroyed it. So that was the end of that. Redneck Aquatics said, actually Raccoon, if you could email me again, I've added more plants, so I'd like to email you again. All right, sounds good. Um, send that to me, and I'll I'll get you up next week. Pacific Reef Imports. I'm currently running three FX sixes on my 180 gallon planted tank, and circulation so circulation is great. Should I drop one and use CO2? Hmm. That's a good question. Does anybody have any suggestions for Pacific Reef imports? I would say um, my big thing is you don't want too much surface agitation if you're running CO2 injection, just because you'll lose a lot of the um, a lot of the uh, CO2 that you're pumping in there from from the gas ex exchange. So right now I have a lot of gas uh, surface agitation because I don't have CO2 injection, and that's going to help me get a lot of a lot of balance of the gases. Um, but I, that's my only thing. If you have a lot of circulation, it's causing a lot of surface agitation. Maybe that's my thing. Maybe reduce one of those because of that. Um, but does anybody else have any advice as far as that goes? Am I, am I on par there? Am I, am I correct as far as, um, as far as eliminating one of the FX sixes? I, if it's not causing a ton of surface agitation, I would say all three would be fine. Terry's, Terry's Tropical Tank says, with African Rift Lake cichlids, all I could keep was, was swords and Java fern narrow leaf. You know, I'd, I'd say it's safe to say that uh, everyone has a different experience, right? Um, so definitely, uh, I'm surprised you couldn't keep Anubias in there because they're, they're so bulletproof and tough, especially if you have them anchored to a rock or, or something along those lines. So. Um, An orchard here on YouTube uses an algae scrubber. Um, it don't look the best, but it does a good job. Crystal Shack Aquatics. Me and my late mother used to put plants in a in a rather large. Pot. Hope the sickles didn't notice at the top of the pot. Worked quite well. Well, that's a really good advice. Help protect the plant. Help disguise it. That's a really good idea. Actually, it was Af African cichlids and Cuban plants. Well. So 
So it's hump day. We're almost through the week. Um, I think we're going to start getting ready to wrap up here. So um, I, think, I think we're going to wrap up here. So hope everyone has a Merry Christmas, um, a great uh, holiday with your family and friends. Um, hopefully you get a little bit of downtime and get some time to relax, um, get to do the things that you like to do, um, and just have a great season, guys. Um, I'll be, I'll post my video as normal on Sunday. I'll be back hopefully with the live stream next Wednesday. So um, between now and then, have a great, great finish to your week, everybody. Um, I'll see you later.